Hi, and we're now into episode two, and this episode is going to be all about using these small rockets to nail off these in-atmosphere contracts. We've got two contracts going. One is to test the SRB that you see here, and the other is to hit an altitude of 11 kilometers. Uh, I've already done uh, a lot of the simulations and just doing some final tweaking here, and we're pretty much ready to go. Of course, we have to because of constru uh, Kerbal construction time. It's going to take time to build it. Notice the time to prep the launch pad. That's going to take an extra two days to prep the launch pad. Uh, and also, our vessel time, notice that the time is much less than it was before. It was like 10 days before. Now it's only a few days. And that's because we're reusing a number of parts. If you use the same parts over and over again, uh, your build times become significantly less. We're also not going to use Jebediah this time, but instead go to our scientist, Bob. So uh, here we are, and here we have Bob sporting his very fine, I think, scientist-looking mustache. And uh, we're pretty much ready to go. Now, the one thing Bob has, or doesn't have really, is he can't lock in that SOS or SAS, so I have to steer this thing manually, and I want to tweak it towards the west because I want to land in the grasslands but also I need to keep it largely on that velocity vector because if I stray too far from the velocity vector the aerodynamics associated with near will get this rocket tumbling out of control so I can't be too crazy in my flight I have to be gentle I have to make these constant corrections but uh, we seem to be doing all right here The other thing to notice here too is the SRB makes things a little bit differently because I have no throttle control whatsoever. I can't shut this engine off. Once I've lit this fuse, this engine's going to burn until it runs out of fuel. So uh, that's the reason why I went for the liquid engine with the first mission. But here I do want to test the SRB, so this is what we got. All right, so our fuel has just run out and we have crossed over our max altitude so we've knocked off uh, that bit of our test and now all we got to do is survive our landing um, this thing I'm trying to control it as best I can um, but it is it does want to go nose down and the reason why it wants to go nose down is because that SRB engine is much lighter than the liquid fuel engine and uh, so the, all the mass is towards the front, and no matter how I shake it, this thing's going to land capsule first. And i got to be honest, I was nervous about this. Uh, I didn't want to hit the ground capsule first, uh, but as you can see, it all came out okay anyway. All right, so now we do our usual science collecting, and notice that Bob is supporting a very fine blue science suit. And there we go. So we go through our stuff, we collect some money, we collect some science, we've knocked off some of these contracts, we go in and check out our science, but unfortunately the 13.7 science that we have is not enough to unlock any of these nodes. Remember, we already do have the stability node unlocked, it's still being researched. So we exit out of that, <coughs> and we head over to pick up another contract, and right away I do see this hit a 22 kilometer altitude contract, then after that, the picking start to become pretty slim. I mean, I, I, you do have these aerial survey contracts, but really those are much better with a plane. I don't have any of the plane uh, parts unlocked yet. We have these uh, test apart while in flight in Kerbin's atmosphere, but I really hate those. It's, it's very awkward to try and hit the right altitude and the right uh, speed with a rocket as opposed to a plane, so I don't want to do those ones. And then the rest of them all involve going into space or going into orbit. So what I decided to do was to kind of go with just the one contract for now, go through the process of building a rocket that will hit that 22 kilometer uh, altitude record, and then by the time the rocket is built, hope that maybe something else comes up. Now I do have these science goos now unlocked, so that adds some options. So I go through the testing phase, and then I go through the tweaking phase, and I go through the build and the warping phase, and then I come all the way back a few days later and check, and lo and behold, there is a land in a specific <laughs> biome, and when I check on the biome, it says land in the grasslands biome. 
<clears throat> and return some science from there. And I can do that. I mean, I just did that with Aerosuttle too. We landed in the grasslands biome. So I'm all over that. I picked that. And so here we got Aristotle 3. And this time we've got uh, Bill at the helm, our engineer. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about, some, some of the naming conventions I have for the ships. Probably people have noticed that these ships have all been called Aristotle. I tend to name ships after scientists. That's one of the things I do when I tend to go chronologically with scientists. The other thing I sometimes do is I will name ships simply after their function, call ships like Rescue 1 and Rescue 2, pretty dull that way. Um, and then sometimes I start to name ships Kerbalized versions of historical ships like Kerpalo and things like that. <clears throat> so, you know, this is mostly due to my startling lack of imagination. Uh, Aristotle's my first scientist, and some people might be wondering, well, Aristotle's not really a scientist, is he? I mean, he was a 4th century BC Greek philosopher. <clears throat> but what he did do was try to explain natural phenomenon using non-supernatural explanations. He tried to use reason, and he was really one of the first people to try and lock down some natural laws, some natural sciences, and yes, what he said did get kind of indoctrinated into gospel during the Middle Ages in the Western world, and that's not exactly the greatest thing in the world, but he did a lot of good things as well. All right, so we have now run out of fuel, and you can probably see I am not going to be making my 22 kilometer altitude limit, which is not too atypical for me, unfortunately. I seem to enjoy uh, making my fuel rations really, really tight. And this time it came around and bit me in the behind. So, uh, yeah, that's my own fault. So that's unfortunate. Not going to make the 22 kilometers. In fact, it looks like I'm just about to start to head back down again. So we'll have to try that contract again. Oh, and yeah, uh, releasing those parachutes was a mistake. Um, I do have deadly reentry on, and if I hit a supersonic speed, um, yeah, those parachutes are going to break. And I can see my speed increasing. I'm already at 260 kilometer, or meters per second, 270 meters per second. If I start getting into the mid to high 300s, I am in serious trouble. There goes 300 meters per second, 310, 320, 330. Seems to be slowing down though, 340. It's not going up quite as quick. Oh, and yeah, out 346. And there it goes, there it goes. It's starting to go back down again, so that makes me feel better. I could have killed Bill there if those, uh, if that speed got up a little bit higher. But thankfully that didn't happen, and Bill's doing all right. And I am trying to control this vessel the best I can, but without any SAS, uh, yeah, this thing really doesn't want to go in any particular orientation. So I'm kind of in a, a tumbling mode here, but I'll, I'll cut to the chase and get close to the bottom. So we're almost there. We've got 30 meters, 20 meters, 10 meters, and, oh, yeah, well, um, I, what, oh, okay, that was one of my goo canisters. That's not so good. Okay, I still have one. I don't know what I lost there. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I can do a crew report because I'm pretty sure I already have that. Yeah, I already have that from the grasslands. And that's the same thing with EVA reports. Uh, that's not going to do me any good either. Um, I guess I can try and get the science from this goo canister. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I got a sweet bunch of nothing here. This is why you don't send engineers out in the field. This is why they belong with slide rules behind their desks. All right. Uh, this, I got nothing out of this. I didn't reach my altitude. I didn't get any science from the grassland biome. So it's time for Jeb to show us how it's done with Aristotle 4. Aristotle 4 has got a bit more fuel on board. It also has extra goo canisters. There's three of them in total. And extra special, it now has these wonderfully looking tail fins. The tail fins bring that center of drag way back towards the back. This thing becomes much more stable than our previous rockets. 
and it's going to want to fly very much in a straight line. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to want to uh, head off towards the grasslands and do the things that Bill could not do. And we have reached our altitude, so that is fantastic. We collected some high altitude science while we were up there as well. And now I am trying to hold this particular attitude, and no, that isn't going to happen. This thing is a lawn dart. There is no way around it. It just wants to go straight down. Um, thankfully, I am able to deploy those parachutes. You probably saw the warnings come up saying, don't deploy the parachutes now. That would be a really bad idea. But, oh, a few kilometers from the ground, I was able to deploy the parachutes, and Jeb with his nerves of steel never was in doubt for a moment that things weren't going to come out okay and down he goes and there's really not much else to do remember we did collect all the science we could from here so that's it but that does knock off those two contracts that does pick us up quite a bit of science we now are up to 39.8 science uh, I take a look at the, the uh, administrative building too because I'd really like to do this fundraising campaign but as you can see 25% uh, I don't have the reputation for it and so I'm not going to start it until I can get it up to 25% so I'm going to put that one on hold for now but we will check out science and I now have enough to finally get the survivability so we'll pick that up and with 24.8 left I have enough for general rocketry as well so that's fantastic so we'll grab that And now it's down to our last mission of video. This is Aristotle 5. And this is our newest pilot. I started to realize that doing these missions with Jeb wasn't really a good idea. So this is our newest pilot, Manuki. She first tested off these SRBs for a testing a surface uh, part contract. And she's going to do a little bit of goo gathering, even though she's already been some blue. And she is heading off towards the highlands just to land in a different biome once again now the idea here is for me to separate the rocket from the command capsule so the command capsule is going to separate as we get towards the top of our flight and there's the parachutes on the uh, rest of the rocket should return that rocket safely and I'm playing around with I've never played around with this real sh shoot stuff so I, I, I gotta be honest I really don't know what I'm doing I'm kind of guessing uh, what to put it at. I am sort of aiming north and west because I know I can get myself into some highlands if I go in that direction but what I want is I don't want real um, or deadly re-entry to end up breaking my chutes because they deploy uh, too high or too late or anything like that so I don't know I just took a guess at it and then as I was up on my ascent I had this idea why don't I, when I detach and separate from the main rocket, orient the rocket so that it's perpendicular to my trajectory? So I aim myself to one of the normal vectors and detach, and that pushes that stage off sideways. And if that stage ends up being more than 2.5 kilometers away from the command capsule, then KSP will remove it as a tracking object. It will take it off and it will assume it is being destroyed. However, Kerbal Construction Time, if it sees an object that has deployed parachutes, and that one just now has deployed parachutes, and it gets removed by KSP, Kerbal Construction Time will count that as a recovered stage and give you back the appropriate amount of funds for it. So what I'm hoping is that I end up more than 2.5 kilometers away. If it ends up being less than 2.5 kilometers away, then physics is going to take over and maybe deadly reentry might end up wrecking my chutes. There I'm getting that don't open the chutes warning. And oh, that the uh, stage just disappeared. It just went more than 2.5 kilometers. There's the notification that the stage did get recovered. So that's fantastic. And now we're at the bottom. Everything went well. We were collecting our science from the highlands and Manuki for your inaugural flight, you did fantastic. So that's going to be it, and we'll see you next episode.